Hey YouTubers, here's that teal Eric's box car 6014. I promised to show you when it arrived. Pull the camera back slightly. Okay, and what a beautiful box car. And as I said on my last one of my uh, last uploads is that I had seen this about 10 years ago on eBay and someone wanted 60 bucks for it and I thought that was ridiculous for uh, an item made in China and plug door <laughs> at that uh, you know if it had been made in the 50s and it been in our uncatalogued set yeah it might be worth that much so I'm going to show you my other old air axes this gives me three and what a beautiful shield up here with a bass jumping and a spinning reel and a fishing rod let's back this old Berkshire up if it'll there. I think it's in neutral. There we go. And there's my red 6014. I believe it was made in about 1958. This is in pretty good shape. And one thing you'll see is you'll see all these extra rivets down here and through here and you will not see that on the uh, more modern box car come on where they decide to get rid of the rivets it's just smooth see a few rivets at the bottom and the top and then I also have the I'm pretty good at this I'm using a Z and a transformer a ZW and sometimes a little electricity will leak through and it won't quite go into neutral and it wants to stay into the uh, I say gear <laughs> like a car <laughs> forward reverse and and neutral but it's it's the uh, it's the reversing unit which is a solenoid so it doesn't get to uh, reverse itself if it's still getting electricity but anyway we'll get back to the car <laughs> and this is a 6044 and I hear there may be more different kinds out there, but uh, this is pretty much all I'm interested in. And this is going to finish my set. I'm going to get this other train that's parked behind this out of the way, and you'll see why. Let's go forward. And the reason I had tr so much trouble finding this again, and I assumed the price, you know, would go down because no one was bidding on it 10 years ago. And it, the uh, seller just took it off the, uh, took it off of eBay. I don't know whatever happened to it but uh, it turns out this came with three other cars and two pieces of fast track and it was called the Scout Expansion Pack and I need two pieces of fast track like I need a hole in the head I love my old tubular track and uh, this is one of the cars that came with the expansion pack like I said, I wasn't aware it had two more cars. And this is a 6404X. And it has a waffle bottom. 
so it's really well reinforced but what I care about having that waffle bottom is that it's heavy and this little car is pretty heavy so it's not apt to derail and this is the third car that came with it we'll cycle through the E unit here we go big old Berkshire up there that's good enough and this is a Line X fuel car and it's only seven and a half inches long which is nice so it sort of fits in with my eight inch uh, shorties as my friend Ed Burke likes to call them shorty box cars I call them plug door box cars because the doors don't open and this is high octane gasoline and the number on it is LGX 6035 before I show you the box that it came with this is an other item that I recently picked up cycle that e unit <laughs> It's a true value hardware store, I guess 40th anniversary, hard to read the gold without my glasses. Probably will be able to read it on the screen after, <laughs> after the film is made. And it's a 16207 and it's uh, um, not a post-war, it's a MPC. And what I found out, I thought, well, some of these NPCs were derailing because they had ver the heavy post-war in front of them and behind them. So on a corner, they were getting pulled from the back and they were getting pulled from the front, so they pull off the corner. So I simply set the uh, post-war. Post-war have two weights because they have two different kinds of couplers. So I set the post-war post <laughs> ones on my postage scale and got a good idea what the uh, weight was. Uh, actually, and I wrote it all down and I found out by adding six pennies and tossing them inside the shells that made them heavy enough that they were the same weight as the post war approximately. So this is really a beautiful car. Okay, let's get Mr. Berkshire to pull this out of the way. And I'll show you the box that this came in. pull the camera back and this is the Scout Freight ex Expansion Pack 6-301135 and I've I purchase, when I purchase that true value car, I will often uh, look at what other items the seller has available because I figure, well, he might have similar uh, cars, something else I'm interested in. And he had this freight expansion pack, and I go, oh my God, there's that teal. Eric's box car that I saw 10 years ago that I've never been able to find and uh, so, so uh, I wrote down the number and then I looked on eBay and it turned out he had the lowest price on it and what I'm finding out is if you save it to your memory on eBay if you have an account on eBay uh, 
you know, there's no more train shows right now, so the only way we're going to find our trains is is through uh, yard sales or eBay or if you know know people and and train clubs are selling trains, but it's going to be mostly uh, for the moment. It's going to be mostly uh, through your internet. But I checked and it went his he was selling his for I think it was forty seven forty eight dollars probably and because uh, it's usually like forty seven ninety nine and then his shipping was reasonable considered that you had two pieces of fast track and three cars in there and so I but I looked on eBay and it went all the way up to 149 through different sellers so I thought well this guy's got the best deal so I saved it in my memory like I said and I got a uh, notice that within so many hours if I uh, paid I believe it was $45 dollars that uh, I could purchase at this expansion pack. And as it turns out, a lot of uh, uh, sellers are doing that. I don't think the, obviously the economy's not doing that well. So, you know, I saved a few bucks and it helped pay for the shipping, but for $45 for three cars, that's a pretty good deal. And for new cars. What I did do is I had an extra steel. Huh, I got it right here. I've got. It. I bought seven cars of these uh, plug door cars with busted shells, and these are the original metal shells, and. You'll see the little screw on the end. There's the coupler. Oops! There's the coupler. I'm looking at it with my eyes, not through the camera. And I mounted that to the bottom of the uh, new teal Eric's car. So as far as I'm concerned, it's as good as the old original uh, post-war Lionel. So anyway, I promised you guys that I would show this to you. And now you know, if you're interested in this car, uh, I sure as heck wouldn't pay $149. I see if uh, somebody's got it for sale, I believe for 67 and there's three watchers. And I, all the way up to 149 <laughs> Those people are going to have to come down. But uh, I was very happy to get this. And... Uh, I'm not a rich guy, so I'm not spending a lot of money on on trains. And uh, that's the end of my film. And how I found this is the mystery of the Teal Eric's car. It is not listed in Greenberg's. It it is not cataloged because it only came in this set. So you have to know the number of the set in order to get the car. And I like the little uh, flat car with the... Uh, this is the same little Ford sedan that they put in the uh, uh, the uh, old auto carrier supposed to war. It's the same design. And it's a, a good quality uh, little... Uh, tanker car as well. So at any rate, once again, yeah, we can see Big Lizard over there. Let's see if the camera will, will focus in on him and not the uh, train. And then people have asked me what that sign is in his hand. And it says, we'll work for sushi. And yes, it's spelled incorrectly. It's spelled S H 
U-S-H-Y. But Big Lizard didn't get to go to school. He was too busy uh, smashing Tokyo. So that's my story and I'm t sticking to it. Thanks for watching. And I hope everybody had a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.